And hello, everybody. Welcome to the panel cast. Hi. We are here at the. Uh, I'm I'm the host AJ. I'm here. Some old guy, barking dogs, and these people that look like sisters and brother. Um. And the barking dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the dog barking is fine. Special guest. Yeah, special guest. Yeah. Anyway, we're here with uh, Adam and Jess of Adam and Jess FX. Hey, everybody. Uh, we've had them on the show many, many, many moons ago. Um, I don't know why we had them on the show. I think we were, you were first starting out. Yeah. You had like four, four masks. Yeah. And we were pimping them out. <laughs> um, Four pathetic little masks. Yep. It was, uh, it was something. It was. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and what your business is about? Take it away. So we're Adam Jess FX. Uh, I'm Adam and this is Jess. Uh, we make professional... Her last name is FX, by the way. <laughs> they legally changed it. it. That would be kind of awesome. When we got married, uh, we changed it to FX. <laughs> <laughs> we make uh, professional uh, quality haunted attraction props for uh, any haunts large, small, uh, and, and we try our best to meet the needs of uh, everybody out there. Are you the strong silent type? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Sometimes I let him do all the talking, and then sometimes he makes me do all the talking. We trade. Yeah. It's called a partnership. Nice. What are you doing? doing? That was my junk. <laughs> <laughs> just fell. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right up there. When you get older, it just, just kind of fell out my shorts there. <laughs> fell, uh, like a bad 70s gym. You guys have epoxy, right? Oh, yeah. right? <laughs> they, they specialize in that here. I knew I was going to get an upgrade. So <laughs> I went my detachable one. That's where the effects come in. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've got good all right, There you go. <laughs> um, uh, do you have any uh, samples of your work here that we can look at? We do, yeah. There's um, a, a little bit right now. Our our season actually just came to an end. We just shipped out the last of our orders today, so there's not much going on, but we do have a couple of things. Awesome, and that should be showing up on your screen right now. Uh, if it's not, it's because it's his fault, and he didn't send me any of the images he was supposed to. Yeah. I am AJ. I have no problem pointing at the blame of who's to blame in these things, or he forgot to edit them in, yeah. or I forgot to edit them in. It depends. <laughs> Most likely, so. <laughs> I'm still gonna blame him yeah. or him. I have nothing to do with you. Or, <laughs> or forgetting to send me the audio file. Oh, that's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot we're even coming today. So, and you told me yesterday. So, um, what got you into this? But to update all the fans, yeah. you know, um, all two of the fans who are still listening. Jimmy being one of them. Yay, Jimmy! <laughs> We bring up Jimmy of Benbetter.com in case you don't know. Is it weird all of us turning at the camera at the at same, same time? time? It's weird, right? Because <laughs> um, they, you guys interviewed Jimmy and be with Jimmy yesterday, right? Yeah, yes. Jimmy had us on his podcast uh, yesterday. That was super yeah, fun. It was. Yeah, was awesome. Old time friend. Super How old time? Huh? How much of an old time friend? I think 20 years. Maybe. I don't know. At least 10. From where? I don't remember. A thousand? <laughs> See how she's trying to use her she's trying to use her connections to get in places? <laughs> she doesn't even know where she knows this dude from. I don't. I she I just silently up on I think I know you. <laughs> Can we be friends? Can you be interview friends? me? <laughs> I, like I don't remember if we met through a mutual friend, college, or at <clears throat> a comic book store. Because we used to like do like they. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you. How old were you twenty years ago? <laughs> Never ask a lady your age. Probably we like, stopped. Keeping I was sixteen. You were sixteen. Yes. Math is hard. Yeah. Isn't it part of what you do? No. She's after surgery, so she could be on some <laughs> heavy medications. Post surgery? <laughs> I don't know, babes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Remember how I was. Okay. Well, 16. Yeah, if you remember, please tell me. At 16, were you in college? 
No. He so I doubt so you met him in college. college. <laughs> so then it was the comic book store or a mutual friend. Okay. Did you have any friends when you were 16? Okay. So then you probably met Jimmy at a comic book store. Are we, are, we, are we playing the process of elimination? I watched Matt Lock yesterday. <laughs> You're old. That's right. Comic book store. There you go. There it is. Now, what comic book store? It has a four in it. Four color fantasies. There you go. That one. Now, if it was 20 years ago, it was probably in San Bernardino somewhere. I don't think it was. Oh, that was at the top of Archibald. Yeah. yeah. Damn, I'm fucking Batman. Look at that shit. So how long ago was that? 20 years ago. More like 19. I met, no, yeah, 19 years ago, he was at the open store. Because I met Chris when 17 years ago, uh, when they first started dating Alicia. So, and Chris was at the Archibald store uh, toward the top of Archibald where the 330 is now. Or 210. Now he's in the middle of Archibald off the field. He okay. moved there about five, six years ago. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing 17 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but how am I supposed to remember all this? Sorry, AJ's our detective here. Right. I'm the one actively smoking here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a better memory than the three of you. Well, I know I met you somewhere like eight years ago. I can feel confident about that. Hmm? It's because you two have started dating. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've had a lot of confessions. Right. And I met you today. See, on it. It's perfect. That worked. <laughs> you still met him two years ago. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes. Where? I don't know. I'm making it up. I met him today. <laughs> today. <laughs> You're just making up stories now. Right. Yeah. Well, he does. It's my show. It would be not even Jess anymore. I know. It's FX. I told you. Exactly. So, um, um, since the last time we saw you, uh, how have things grown? What have you done to make things grow? Stuff like that. We're always looking for uh, new products to make. Uh, since the last. No, 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 no. Generalized. Just give me some specifics. What did you do in order to make your what you do so popular and that you're still continuing on? Here we are, what eight years later, doing this. Like, I think our biggest our biggest thing that we dove into was props. Since the last time we were on your podcast. Um, well, we have a website. I don't even yeah. think we had a website when we first did the podcast. I don't think we did either. So right. we got a website, mm -hmm. and then we started doing shows. Yeah. Because that wasn't really a thing yeah. either. It just, it doesn't feel like that long ago to me. But yeah, yeah we weren't you're, even doing shows. Now that you're like, 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 on Instagram, doing, like, live selling things. And we yeah. were just, like, live. And, like, do you want Mass Number 2? And, do you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the was, biggest different thing is like you're doing shows. live auctions on, on yeah, yeah. Instagram, Instagram, Instagram lives can really boost up yeah. business, and which is helpful. what TikTok's taking over to now with a lot of that. But selling yeah. selling online, especially during like COVID and stuff yeah. like that, that's uh -huh. when it really because that's what everybody had, nobody had anything to do during COVID yeah. but sit around and spend money. Yep. Yes. And, and that's what, that's why we <laughs> those live sales on Instagram was during 2020. Yeah. And uh, and. I had gotten the idea from like those crystal sellers, and that's like all they do is live sales. Yeah. And I was like, "Whoa, wait a minute! Like we we can, we do, can do the that. same thing with like masks." And uh, yeah, it paid off. Wasn't but, your sister a crystal seller? <clears throat> no idea. <laughs> Maybe. Well, no, I mean meth. Huh? There's <laughs> 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 a movie to fund, right? <laughs> Yeah, I just Robert, what is your Robert Rodriguez? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the biggest thing was the, the website and uh, getting and that and going and doing shows. And then, like I was saying, shortly after we got a few shows under the belt, we jumped into doing more props, mm -hmm. uh, as well as some masks that we started off doing. And uh, yeah, it just kind of took off from there. The, the props are, are definitely our, our big thing now. We still yeah. do a lot of masks and we still offer them all. 
-hmm. But uh, we still offer costumes here and there. Uh -huh. It's almost like a secret menu. Yeah, like but, going to In and Out Burger. <laughs> You can, you can get a costume from us, but you may not know that you can. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just well, now you do. Everybody that watches the show, you can get costumes from us. Just you know, email us or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, doing a doing a website was tricky because we didn't hire anybody to do it for us, and we don't know what we didn't know what we were doing at the time. Yeah, that was a big learning curve. And it, it took. Uh, I remember volunteering for that, but I still didn't get a phone call. Hey, listen, man. It was 2020. There was everybody was standing six feet apart. You know. We also were bored. Basically. Yeah, I needed something to do. Okay. <laughs> You're just bitter. Constantly bitter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I drink uh, sweet tea to calm it down. Iced tea. Iced sweet tea. Building the website was hard. Uh, it took, I want to say it took like almost, we did it in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. I want to say it took like the whole year and like the whole lockdown, just sitting there figuring yeah. out how website building works, mm -hmm. uh, which was really confusing and frustrating. Getting sometimes. all the licensing. Yep. Getting all the, the right things in order. And then finally being able to launch it was a huge relief. Even though when we launched it again, I think we only had like 10 masks on there. But we were more than excited to do it, and uh, you know, every time we would we would get like one order every two or three months, mm -hmm. and we would like freak out with excitement, you know, because that was like uh, amazing. Uh, and we still get excited when we're on. We, we still get very excited yeah. when orders when they, they pop just up. happen more frequently now, and it's yeah. a little bizarre. And that excitement turns into damn it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's great. Happens. Now we're gonna do it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The crunch time now too. Because before it was just like, oh, we need this, like, we need it in a month. We're just like, oh, that's fine. Like, you're only order. Um, not a big deal. But now they're like, we need it in two weeks. And we're like, cool, on top of like 50 other orders. Yeah. And it's like, oh. It's a great thing to have, but it's, uh, it can get stressful. So, but we're happy. We still, you know, we're, we're not like sitting in an office somewhere. No offense to the people that do that, but like, you know, it's not our we're, we're not those type of people. So, we still love what we do, and uh, even though it can get chaotic and stressful at times, it's still fun. Well, I mean, technically, this is your office. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're not a shop now. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the shop. This yeah. didn't exist. Mm -hmm. we were... Yeah, the last time you were in my garage for this interview, so yeah. working out of your garage. Yep. Yeah. And that was a, a very tight situation. So it's nice to have a little bit of a larger space now. Um, but skill set had to have improved too in order to meet demand yeah. and, and 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 with stuff yeah. that you're doing. So how did that happen? One of the one of our biggest things is uh, figuring out how to make things better, almost like prototyping. Um, and that's a that's like a huge uh, when it comes to having a skill set of making something and then looking at it and being able to say, okay, how can it be better? You know. Uh, and, and not just as far as how it looks, but durability, um, you know, just a bunch of different aspects go into it. Uh, and it's, it's hard because sometimes you think you, you've got a pretty solid product, if it's a proper mask or whatever. And then uh, a customer will email you and say, hey, my mask straps broke off last night while I was working at my haunt. And we're like, okay, well, that shouldn't be happening. So what do we got to do to fix it and make it better from there on out? Uh, that's been a, a learning curve but uh again if you if you don't if you're not able to kind of look that dead in the face and say okay i'm willing to take this challenge to make it better then uh you do just kind of plateau and stay stagnant a lot of trial and error mm -hmm. but uh trying things seeing what works what can we improve on it and mm -hmm. just keep going from there and if you like it enough to put it out as a product but where does the initial learning come from did, oh, like where do we? Did, have you, to did, did you have to take a course somewhere? Did you go online? Did you? I mean, pull out your ass. Like, how is this all? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that that happens a lot. Of these we'll set up, but did, uh, can we have an example? You know, I mean, we don't think pull it off right now, but I wasn't asking. That was because if she would pull it out of your ass, listen, you're asking a lot. You're asking a lot. <laughs> I got it. I got to be better than the other guy. That you're interviewing with, you know. 
Jimmy. <laughs> we love you, Jimmy. <laughs> um, I, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on the internet, on YouTube. Uh, you know, we, we luckily live in a day and age where people are always doing different tutorials and stuff, and some talented people out there showing, uh, graciously showing what they know. Uh, but uh, knowing the right people helps a lot, you know. Uh, knowing knowing people that are in this industry that are doing it on a professional level and are willing to uh, help share info with us just because they they see that we're taking this serious, you know, and that we're not out here just kind of playing around. It's not a hobby to us. It's a serious career. Uh, so those people have been willing to share some little tips and tricks, and that's been super helpful. Uh, and then there's there's sites like the Stan Winston School thing. The, you like buy a subscription for it. Uh, I bought a, a year. Yeah, I bought a year of that, and that was amazing. There's some I, awesome paint tutorials on there. Uh huh. There's we we watched a lot of the paint tutorials, uh, sculpting ones, uh, mold making yeah. ones. Yeah, those those helped us a ton. Uh, they're very long videos, but you know, so if, if you're if you're like us and you just truly enjoy the nitty gritty of this type of stuff, whether it's mold making or whatever, you'll sit there and watch a 12 hour video, no problem. Uh, so that helped a ton. And the coolest thing is, is you can do it like, I watch because I do custom action figures and it's a lot of the yeah. same thing. I'll, I'll take from painters, sculptors, like different, and there's so many like YouTube videos out there, there's courses you can buy um, online and like there's online schools that you can buy just a three hour course and just, Piece things together and then trial and error it like, yeah, yeah, constantly. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's what's cool too is that like we've taken, um, you know, some of the ideas that we we watched on the standards in school and uh, kind of said, okay, you know, that worked for the guy on standards in school that was doing it, but let's see what we can kind of change around to work for what we need to do. Um, yeah. So that's been kind of cool is to be able to experiment on our own as well. And you know, play with different materials and stuff, and figure out what works for our needs. Um, so and part that of it, a big part of it in college too. Yeah, because I I have a theater degree along with other things that I didn't like to get a degree in. And then <laughs> <laughs> surprise, yeah, like I'm I'm a paleontologist by accident. It's great. Um, <laughs> it's super random, but um. For theater, so taking like some tech classes and painting, and even like special effects, makeup, and using like different theories of color there and putting it with other types of paint and things. Like, I don't know, you just mix it up and find what works for you. What are you doing next Halloween? I don't know. My anniversary. Obviously, not on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You never know. I still don't know what I'm doing now. Sure. Let me chat. Okay. <laughs> so in the time since our last podcast, we've also had you were, and this is September, weren't you? I don't know what month that was. I'll be honest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've, we've already established bad memories here. <laughs> I had the decency to look it up before I came here. Y'all could have done the same thing, just say. <laughs> yeah. Was I September? Yeah, Labor Day. You were uh, oh, Rosie the Ruby. For Labor Day. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah so I, I got her to uh, pose for the <laughs> calendar we did. The one year the pose of uh, pinup calendars. That was super fun. Yeah. Well, I'm looking to do something like that again, so. Yeah. Or let him know. I, I don't know about him anymore. <laughs> he never. Right. He's hurt by the whole Jimmy thing. I know. I know. He's, uh, he's going to cry the whole ride home. You don't understand. Sure. Jimmy and I just broke up last month. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known he got you in the freaking friendship, then you were a day later. there was a divorce. There was a divorce. <laughs> that was short and day late. I'm already mad because nobody ever calls me. And now this? Oh, wow. Listen, people still call people? No. Yeah. He doesn't call me. He just texts. And he never texts me. He'll call you in the middle of the night. 
<laughs> that's weird. That's brother crap, though. That's different. I just get texts from him once in a while that just say hi. Like, yeah, I'll do that. Hi. How you doing? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Okay, that's like. <laughs> That's me saying, hey, dude, I'm fucking thinking about you. How are you doing? Yeah, and I reply, I say, hi, how are right. you? Right. That's nothing like, you know. Okay, next time you That's text. me saying, hey. <laughs> What's up? I'm sorry. You have very soft hands. <laughs> I do. Next time you text me, hi, I'm just going to call you. Well, and you like well see, you see what, what you don't understand is, <laughs> is, is the fact that I'm the one always texting and calling you. Yeah. So you need to just random right. call him. Well, but here's the thing. He also doesn't text me and call me. He does not call me. He does not. You can look at my call log. He does not call me. We're going to have this. This is what the show is about tonight. <laughs> is us arguing right now. About who calls who. About who calls who the most. This is when my degree in therapy, in freaking psychology is going to come in. Right. I would be a couples therapist right now. Here we go. <laughs> Modern therapy is the new TV show from Forbidden Battle coming this fall. It is fall. So that's why we're having the first episode. It's, it's the fucking pilot. Get on board. I wouldn't watch this again. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible pilot. Oh my god, I got space roller coaster. Space coaster in my head. Is that what it was called? Get on board on this great, great, great space, space coaster. coaster. Off we go. Oh. 70s TV show, you kids wouldn't know nothing about it. Oh, okay. Anyway. Was it 80s? Yeah. It was 80s? No, it was like late 70s. It started in the late 70s. Maybe, yeah, maybe late 70s. Gary Ganu? Yes. What's new in the news with Gary Ganu? Yeah, and the elephant. Brew. It was it's like. Wild. Yeah. Everything that started in the 70s was wild. wild. <laughs> Look at anything that Sid and Marty Croft did. Everything that they did. I was just one big acid trip that kids used to watch in the morning. H and R Puff and stuff. Talking flute. Hello. Singing in the sea monsters. Mm -hmm. There's actually a documentary that talks about how much acid they were doing when they came up with that stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. The sea sitting in the sea monster and oh man. <laughs> stuff was wild. Witchy poo. <laughs> Amazing stuff, man. It's all one big acid trip. And watching it when you're older and you see it now, you're like, oh, yeah, this is totally. What was the old one with Chaka? Band of Lost? Yeah. 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 Look up Croft, just Croft Superstars. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing. <laughs> and, then, and then listen to The Land of Confusion by Genesis and watch the video. Oh, the video is. Ooh, creepy puppets. Do you think politics is bad now? <laughs> yeah. It's just creepy political puppets, and like it led to what was it? DC Follies was a TV show. Yeah. With and it was these weird, like very creepy, almost lifelike, like latex based puppets that are just <sighs> yeah, and they're Ooh. like old politicians, and they look creepy. That sounds terrible. Like like uber wrinkled. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, yeah, I'm gonna, 70s and 80s were like, I'm going to come from behind and touch you on your shoulders, wrinkled, like, literally, people, people that developed TV shows in the 70s and 80s were all doing acid, probably in the 60s, so <laughs> <laughs> everything they come up with is like a flashback. Get kids, you're getting an education <laughs> lesson here. <laughs> it's all going to come back around somehow. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're doing all kinds of hallucinogens now, so who knows what they're going to come up with. Woo. The mushrooms are legal, so ish. No, I just ordered a couple. I mean, um, <laughs> I just plant. I just saw some in my lawn the other day that I have to dig up. <laughs> TikTok. Anyway, um, <laughs> explain to me when you first realized, oh shit, this is more than I thought it would be, or this is real. I I know my answer, but go ahead. Mine was, was it three years ago when we first went to Trans World Halloween and Fashion Show? I have no idea what it was. I'll be honest. Um, didn't know anything about the show. You talked about it, and that's about it. And I saw some YouTube videos, and I was like, okay, like it seems like a big show, I guess. And then I went to it and realized 
who was there and how big it was, and that we had this like little booth there, and that was like surreal. And physically, physically, how many like vendors are there? How big the show floor is? It's overwhelming. It's mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. Like it's it's at the convention center that used to be a football field. Is that what it used to be? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's at the old Cowboys Arena, isn't it? Is that mm-hmm. what it is? is that, no, is it not football. It's baseball. No, it's football. Oh, it's where the Rams were. It, it no, looks like a football field inside. It's in St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. So that would be the Rams. Yeah. The Rams, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm not crazy. Okay. I you do things crazy. sometimes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, I think that was my like realization. It was both. It was baseball and football too. Both yeah. the Cardinals and the Rams. Wow, look at me with sports. Yeah. Who am I? Uh, <laughs> Who's Batman now? Here we go. Um, yeah. So I guess that was my realization. Yours. No, same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. same exact thing. I just uh, I wanted to go to that show since I was a little kid. You know, like I would say probably like eight or nine years old. I was just sitting on like the home computer with like the dial-up internet, uh, just watching the Trans World videos. Being you like, dial-up yeah, I know I'm, I'm young, but like, come on, give me a little credit. Here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> He's like. This is like, I found the disc in one of my grandpa's old magazines. <laughs> the old Earthling disc, right. or AOL disc. AOL ones. It said, "Oh, he's got stacks of those things. They would come in every magazine." <laughs> yeah, we uh, like literally. It was like me and my Game Informer. <laughs> okay, back in the days of uh, you know, like you would start a YouTube video and it, you had to like let it load before it would play. Like yeah. I would, I would let these long videos of Trans World load. Uh, and just sit there and watch them over and over. So it's just like fascinated by what these vendors had to offer at the show and that all these people got together for Halloween in like March. And I was like, what? No way. And then I was sad when I finally looked it up and realized it was in St. Louis. I was like, oh, there's no way. Like, I'm not going to fly to St. Louis just to walk around a convention. Uh, but it was still like a dream. You know, I just always like wanted to go. I didn't think. Our first time going would be as vendors. I thought for sure I was going to go as like a, a buyer or a guest first, you know. But uh, yeah, our first year going was 2021? 22. 21. Remember, there's like a lot of like things were going to open, not going to yeah, open. That's it was right. Kinda, so and it was the beginning of the year, so they were like, eh. yeah. It was 20. How's but, that? Uh, yeah. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, just walking in there and seeing the actual show floor for the first time was just like, I, I remember I looked at you and I was like, we're here, like, we're doing this. Yeah. And it was a little intimidating because you, know, you hear other vendors tell stories of coming out of the show with a huge amount of orders. And, you know, we just had like a little 10 by 10 and like minimal product. And I was like, well, are we, are we ready for this? Like. Yeah. Right, like we're doing it. Were you like right? Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy on the Stockholm floor and and trading places? Like, what can yeah. we do with? Yeah, it's just like it was. Or did I just scary. give you a reference that you didn't understand? No, no. Reference, I don't understand. You did, okay. But it was it was a little trading scary. places. Write that down. Trading places. Yeah. Wasn't that like a a home improvement show? No, there's that's trading spaces. <laughs> Plus. You were almost covered in whatever she's drinking, dude. You almost wore that shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, at least I don't have sleeves on. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Trading places. Not sleeves. Along with people. Yeah. These are things that I have to go through. Taking notes. Yeah, mentally. We'll see if they stick. See if they stick. Maybe. How about? Ooh, 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 I want a sex. Is that in the movie? Is that a movie? Are you about movie? Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> he texts me before the last time he came over and says that, and I had never heard that song. 
So I was yeah. like, what is I just thought AJ is notorious for randomly <laughs> texting yep. song lyrics. I, I just thought it was AJ being AJ. So I was like, okay, cool. Like I'm pretty sure that's what I said back was was I like, think he just called you creepy. No, I look because something he did or he looked like one of the guys from Color Re Bad. That popped in your head. And it popped in my head. <laughs> So he's I called him on it. It was, it was a reference that was lost on him. Right. <laughs> yes. I right. figured she would get it because she was like 30 years older than him. But I'm a vampire. I'm like 100 years old. Like, I'm a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> you do keep sucking his like soul and his youth away. How much older than <laughs> you think I'm nice. staying young? <laughs> what? What's the age difference again? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. See? It's not bad. Yeah. Most girls I date are a little bit younger than that. Right, but this is reverse. Yeah, I'm older. It's, 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 you know. Well, if I dated somebody eight years old. I mean, I high five yeah. them behind her back all the time. I'm just saying. <laughs> what? Well, shit, that's a good job. Well, I'm fucking <laughs> applauding you, man. <laughs> Listen, when you're in love. I, I don't know what this podcast has become. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Welcome to the dating game. <laughs> <laughs> Therapy session, the dating game. Or... AJ's just driving like a van that we're all just sitting in for the ride. And offering yeah. free candy. All right. Yeah. All right. Or, or cookies. cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so I got in the van. Cookies. Free candy. We were at our, it was our first big boy booth, right? Mm -hmm. It was our first big boy booth at, we had done like little conventions and stuff before, you know, like small shows and stuff, and yeah. artist mm -hmm. alley shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So we finally get to WonderCon, okay. which is a big, big boy show. Yeah. Right. And we that have was our the second year. Was it? Yeah, because this is the one where we're right across from the Walking Dead. I thought it was the one where we were facing the wall. No, no you're right. No, no, you're right. No. It was the second year. Okay. So the second year. And yeah, we had the Walking Dead. Right. County corner. Yeah. And so we had DC behind us. We had uh, Walking Dead was here. And then over here was his his actual company. Yeah, Skybound. Was Skybound right. was like sharing the wall with us. And then over here was Lion Forge. And then there was the big Marvel display. Big Marvel just... display, right? I mean, we were in the fat of it. Like, nice. we're right in the middle. But we did not belong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, guys, we get on bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, was, it was literally like, you see all these huge companies around us, and we're just like, yeah. <laughs> so I hooked up that booth and made it look as pimp as humanly possible. That looks great, right? <laughs> but I'm sitting there, and one of my one of our workers, Janelle, brought over uh, a bag of chocolate chip cookies for me to have at the booth. So we're sitting at the booth, and I'm eating cookies, and like I see all these people come by, and I'm like, cookie, <laughs> cookie. And everybody that walks by, like some some women were bold enough and came and got some cookies. <laughs> Some children ran to their mothers. <laughs> like, mothers ran with their children away from me. <laughs> Some mothers came over and got the cookie. <laughs> like, oh, so where you started seeing all about. <laughs> <laughs> That's man that we had your sister in a bikini as a zombie dressed across and standing in front of the, the gay guys' booth. I can't remember what they were called. Yeah, the the it's called Unite something. It's yeah. like it's a big comic book company. Like basically, they're they're trying to, to show representation and show that there is yeah. representation in comics. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, really, it's a really cool LGBTQ. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge company. And so here's Marissa sitting over there by them, just like a zombie, <laughs> like directing people to our booth. And they're talking to her, and she like. Okay, it's completely wasted that I look like this next to <laughs> And she just sitting out there looking all lonely and sad. So I started singing. All by myself. And then we all at the booth. We just started singing. <laughs> and she's just like. That's <laughs> that was a fun year. It was a great year. Yeah. Conventions are always fun. They, uh, oh, yeah. It, they're always, especially bigger ones. Small ones are small shows are cool, 
But those big conventions, I don't know if anybody ever actually feels like they belong, though. I even know, I know some big vendors, and even, like, when they go to the big shows, they're just, like, still awestruck, because it's, there's so many talented people out there, like, and you want to look at everybody else's booth, but yeah. you have to be at yours. Yeah. So that's, like... Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. that's what's so hard. <laughs> like, that, that's what we used to schedule slots and times and stuff, and signing times at our booths so that yeah. people would be there for a couple of hours, and then they can leave, and then go do something else while we have other people out there. You know. Yeah, there. yeah we, try, um, we try to do the same thing, we, you know, anybody that works with us working shows, we uh, we try to get enough people to work a booth so that at least one or two people can always kind of be like roaming around, kind of like on call, basically. Right. And uh, and then we just kind of cycle out, you know. And, and then we have a couple of cosplayers that we like to have walking around, passing out cards or, or, or stuff, saying, hey, come on over while we're here at this booth. Yeah. Come check us out, you know. Yes. And and they get to look around and we get stuff at the same time. Yeah. And get serenaded, cool. like your sister. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trans world was something else, you know. Because I always say that, like somebody else actually said this, and I, I, I couldn't agree more <coughs> with it. But it's, it's truly a trade show. Um, and you know, when I think of like a convention, I think of like a lot of fans going, a lot of uh, uh, people that might go and buy like one small little thing. And, then just enjoy the rest of the show. And seeing like a lot of cosplayers there. Yeah. Whereas like, Trans World's the complete opposite. It's yeah. like people people go there in like suit and ties with big budgets and just walk around and buy it. Uh there's there's no cosplayers. Like if you see people dressed up, they're most likely working for another booth. Yeah. Um but uh it's it's a very like professional setting. Even though it's insane and there's giant monsters everywhere and stuff, uh, it's still a super professional setting. So it's like, it's definitely different other than just how big the show is in general. It's definitely a different atmosphere oh, yeah. than like the other shows. That we do. It sounds like it's more industry than anything else. Yeah. yeah. And it's cool too, because it's obviously it's grown over the years. I don't know how long it's been around. It's been a long time. But uh, now they have, uh, it used to just be like Halloween. And now it's, uh, Halloween is still like the biggest section of it, but then there's a portion of it that's geared towards escape rooms, and then there's and a, that's even more recent. Yeah, that's pretty recent. Yeah, but then there's another corner of it that's devoted to Christmas. And when I say corner, uh, we're talking like a whole freaking right. hall of a convention center. But it's cool because it's in like one big room. They're they're not separated by anything, so everybody's there for the same show. You know. Um, and we've even had like some of the people that go for Christmas stuff will stop at our booth and buy Halloween stuff just because they, mm -hmm. they like it. You know, they're they're buying for their companies or their theme parks or whatever, and they're buying Christmas stuff. But then they stop by Halloween and they're like, "Whoa, I like that mask. I'm gonna get one of those too." And, mm -hmm. you know, Christmas and horror go hand exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just uh, it's just a really cool atmosphere. It's, it's just a fun show. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it you know, after all these years and just growing the company. It's still pretty surreal that we can do that. It is. It is. Well, so compared to the first time you went to now, what's your booth size? Uh, our first year was 10 by 10. We've always had a corner spot. Uh, we're just, we both like the corner spots having those two walls. And corner the spots will like the spot. Yep. So, uh, so our, our first year was a 10 by 10 corner. Our second year, we upped it to an end cap, which is two 10 by 10 corners. And uh, this past year, we had the same thing, but just crammed more product into it. Uh, and as of right now, we're keeping the same size for this coming year. Uh, same idea, just reconfiguring the layout of our booth to make sure we can fit as much product as possible into a small space. Uh, but still keeping it, you know, looking good. We don't want it to look cluttered or anything. Yeah, from there we'll see. After 25, we'll see if we want to grow to 30. Yeah. Which Adam's pushing. He wanted us to already do it. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> wait, uh, we're here. We're, we're here. We have a lot of plans. Not and, ready uh, yet. You know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one that does like the booth design on like SketchUp or some little app or whatever mm -hmm. before the show. Um, and we have a lot of plans yeah. for this coming year. And uh, as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to fit in a 10 by 20. So, We'll see. We'll make it work we'll no matter what. Work. But I'm I'm thinking a ten by thirty would be nice. See, she already gave in. It's on camera. <laughs> Boom. 
You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Top that, Jimmy. She <laughs> 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 guys will be on his show next week. No! It's <laughs> 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 This conflicting back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad to see that you guys have grown and in size and stuff. It makes me very happy to see my friends uh, do stuff. Um. So. <laughs> um. What other shows have you done other than Transworld? Oh, okay. Uh, we've done Spoon Swap Meet. Uh, every year that it's been around now, right? Yep. Like we were there the first year. What was that? Right now. Spooky Swap Meet. Then LA at the Heritage Square Museum. Uh, it's really cool. It's a like a halfway to Halloween, right? It's halfway to Halloween event. Everyone gets a trick or treat that has a ticket, like adults <laughs> as well. And there are these Victorian houses in one like block. And so every uh, house it has a sponsor. So we've been fortunate enough that we've been able to do it for. Three years now as a sponsor uh, house? Three years as a sponsor, yeah. Um, and so uh, there's trick or treating, so we get to pass out candy and do things. And then we started, we created an immersive event with it, uh, a crew called Paranormal, what is that? Paranormal, Paranormal Research Company. There it is. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, listen, y'all, it is late. <laughs> uh, I'm. <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> yeah, so that's why we Our are audience. <laughs> You're the audience. <laughs> You're not supposed to admit that on camera. <laughs> um Sorry. yeah, so we have them, it's like a scripted discovering crew. And uh so we've been able to do that show for a long time, which has been really, really nice. And then after that we usually do Midsummer Spring in Long Beach, the Long Beach Convention Center. That's really a lot of fun. So it only sounds like you do three shows? Three shows a year. That's all we can handle. If we do other <laughs> ones, they're usually like little pop up things that are super last minute. But uh, Is it because the work keeps you busy, occupied? Yeah. You know, throughout and the year? Honestly, even the three shows can, can sometimes be a little much to handle on top of fulfilling orders. So yes. if we add any to that mix, it gets real hectic. But real fast. We love those three shows. So, and those three shows, does that, does that support you throughout the year? Yeah, Transworld. Trans or just World. online sales as well? That as well. Mm -hmm. uh, online sales will trickle in at perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah, so luckily the website sales have been like, mixing in to, I don't know, support us. But they, it's it's always like such a good timing. Like I don't know why it's always like a lull of the show, and then it's like what's nice sale all of a sudden. You're like, yeah, it's great. Like it's like it's just like it's perfect little timing. Yeah, between Transworld and the website, that pretty much fuels our year. Uh, yeah. Midsummer and Spooky Swap Meet we do because we enjoy them and they're local. So, but uh, yeah, keeps us busy. Yeah. And uh, have you guys worked on any? Um I don't know, like movie projects or anything, any side projects, something like that? Um, a few like small film things here and there. People will reach out and uh, we usually get at least like maybe two or three a year. We sent one today. Yeah, exactly. Or film. We did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Can you speak on it? Or? Uh, you were the one doing the communication. I just made the problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we can speak on that one. Can we speak about the other movie things about that one either? The one that we had to do like multiple on the kids and they had to be identical. Oh, I don't know about that one, to be honest. I, I don't know. The film industry is full of Indians. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But well, were, first this movie was about, <laughs> and then the other one was, you know. They were fun though. It's it's always fun to do a couple of film things here and there. Um, uh, the the film props tend to have some kind of unique thing customization that they need. Um, which is always fun to switch things up and not just do the same thing we always are doing. Well, all right then. We all got kind of sidetracked and distracted because a roommate came in on the background. So, um, yeah.
<laughs> that's why the awkwardness came. It's okay, guys. Is that why the awkwardness came? Has it been here most of the no, time? No, no. <laughs> Both my hands are above the table. Yeah, man. You're driving this van like we're just so, at your mercy. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a question. Over the last couple of years, have you noticed the boom in the horror community? Because with, with TikTok and with how popular Instagram and all that stuff is, and when everybody was in lockdown, yeah. They started showing their horror collection, and and I've seen like a, a, just amongst collecting, like from selling toys and stuff. People are always looking for props and different toys related to horror. Have you seen noticed how it's booming? Horror is yes. booming at this point. It is, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's been crazy. I think um, it's really nice and rewarding. I feel, yeah. anyways, uh, to see that community come together. And it, sometimes it was like they were always there. We just, I think, all of us were just in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> everybody, everybody. See, it was one of those things where everybody was into it, but like nobody talked about it openly. Yep. Yeah, and now they do, and now it's just like talking about it. I was actually just kind of thinking about this the other day. I had to go to Home Depot for like tape or something, and uh, I walked in, and obviously, like Home Depot's got their whole Halloween thing going on nowadays, which is great. Uh, but I walked in, and there was just like so many people standing around all of these like Home Depot uh, Halloween animatronics set up and just staring at them. Mm -hmm. um, and like seeing little kids like staring at them and just like being in awe about it. Uh, it, it just makes me happy to see that because you would never expect, you know, a store like Home Depot to sell that kind of stuff. I mean, years ago at this time of year, like Home Depot would already be putting our Christmas stuff. Yeah. And it's it, like they would completely like Halloween didn't exist. So no, for a lot of other than your specialty stores like Spirit and stuff like that, exactly. you they would literally skip over Halloween. Yeah, and now it's like Halloween and Christmas seem to be the, the biggest holidays for any retail business. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, that aspect alone of seeing it at random stores like that is is. I was thinking about it. And it's just like wow, this has like become a really big deal for people now. Just Halloween yeah. in general, and then horror on top of it, like. Yeah, you see it in stores a lot more now. Yeah. And then I feel like films too and like shows and stuff, there's a lot more out there. And I think that's what's getting more yeah. people in it. And yeah. it's for all ages too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like seeing different things or like the Wednesday show, right? Mm -hmm. Like that got so many girls into yeah. it. Yeah. Like I didn't have much as a little, like when I was little to like really watch. It. So like for them to have like this new upcoming show that's just like <clears> booming, yeah. I think it's really cool that. More and more I'm, people get to be a part of it. I'm surprised there aren't more shows nowadays geared towards like making the special effects and the monsters. Um, when I was a kid, that was pretty big, and uh, I wish that would kind of come back. You know, that's one thing I'm kind of waiting for that like horror is big, Halloween yeah. is big, but where's the like behind the scenes shows like there used to be? Because I love those, yeah. you know? those are those are nostalgic. And people are always interested in it. Yeah, they were. I mean, but FX had um, Face Off for how long did that go? Yeah, six years, seven yeah. years, something like that. Exactly. One of I remember there was one of our contestants who was a regular at the Boy Store. He would come in all the time. Oh, like I know you from somewhere. He's like, uh, I'm like, and then he was talking about a prop because we we had the when we had the life side Chucky. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I made one of the ones that's uh, animatronic in my shop. I'm like. You were on Face Off. He's like, "Oh yeah." I'm like, "Oh okay, cool." It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I that stuff. I love. I always love. Like, it's. I have this thing for. I, I love horror. I love. I, I love behind the scenes. I love film. So seeing anything behind the scenes, I like the making of film. I like film documentaries. I think that that would be. It would catch on with with a, a younger audience. I think it would be really cool and help support the industry. Yeah, and get away from digital effects. Uh -huh. Practical effects have always looked it, more horror movies are starting to use practical effects again because they look better. Even when they look cheesy, they look better than CGI. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still on the fence a little bit about the, the there's like a whole episode I could dedicate to the dichotomy between whether popularizing what made us individuals back in the day, whether that's good or bad for you. You know, because now it's making, like you said, with Win Wednesday, all the littles have something to watch and stuff well great now it's popular now it's a click and now mm. those kind of girls are not popular girls shining down on everybody else like they did when they were our age yeah. so now those people don't have anyone to look to you know we took that away yeah. from them 
I mean, but it's all yes. cyclical. I mean, everything. Yeah, right. It's, everything's everything's are cyclical. Everything's in a circle. So they'll find their own thing eventually. But for me, like what made me me was that solitude, that aloneness, that sitting around the table, lamp over the corner playing D and D alone at night. Our friends, you know, D and D still not popular. So. D and D is popular. Yeah, it's, it's, it's by Milton Bradley it's, at well at Target. It's still, but it's still very clickish. It's not. They they just made a play, a musical play out of it that's touring Broadway right now. It's still and not. Alicia like, Day is it, rolling around the life size. It's what? not. It's not. But it's not. It's not pop culture popular. And it may it may become because there's like so many famous people that talk about it. More. I mean, more people talk about Warhammer than than they do. D and D, but everything, I mean, it goes, it comes in. It's a, it's a, it's a fad. People that are really into it will stay into it. I mean, like, like for me, like I had skateboarding that was comforting as a kid. I had wrestling that was comforting as a kid. I had comic books and my Transformers. Those were all, and, and Stephen King horror novels. Those were all things I dove into when I was a child because my real life sucked. And that's why I, those are my comforts. You know, and now they're popular, and I feel like all those that made me, like, sure, it makes me feel cool because we can bond over that stuff and tell similar stories. But it's so popular now; it's like, uh, it, it, it's. But it's the same thing when we were. Kids. Oh, you too. Oh, you too. Oh, when you too. When we were you and your uncle, your uncle, fuck you too. You, you know what I mean? Like it's fucking it's everywhere. I don't think that will ever be popular. It's yeah. just, it's just, it's almost trendy now. You know, but and, it, when we were kids, that stuff certain at different times, not all of it at once, and that's the thing. All of it is one at once is popular now. Right at, at different times, all of those things were peaking. There was a time during the '90s when comic books were really popular. There was a time when we were a kid where skateboarding was huge. Right, you know, everything comes and goes. So and now, now people it's will find Olympics, solace. Now, yeah. yeah, yeah, people will always find solace in 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 something. They'll find they'll find some little cubby to hide in. They always and even if it's popular, doesn't mean you have to talk to people about it. And know. and that's fine, but it makes me feel like the pain that I went through, whatever caused me to, to find refuge in these things, uh, doesn't matter anymore because it doesn't make me special because everybody's now gone through them. You know what I mean? So I it, but it makes me feel like a statistic yeah. now. But isn't isn't you know? isn't that part of the healing is the fact that you're not alone. You're True. not the I only mean, one to it, go through what, that. What, what worst case scenario is the realization of how much abuse went on to these kids it, as much as it did with all of us growing up and realizing this. But as much of a travesty as that is, it's still kind of isolating at the same time. I do feel like a lot of the, so like, I know growing up, I was like a little monster nerd, right? Like I loved just monster movies, monster maker shows. Uh, and there was always those kids at school that, you know, bullied me for it and whatever. Um, I feel like nowadays, like, yeah, sure, that I guarantee you still exists. Uh, it does seem like less than when I was a kid. Like there's other problems nowadays. And I think it's, I think a lot of it has to do with the, the kids that were bullying me for it. If they were here nowadays, they they more so just not care about it. If that makes sense, right? It's but, like but what they were bullying you about, like let's say back then. Now, if somebody comes <laughs> up and talks to you about, like let's say some, let's say Twilight, okay, and they're talking about how it's a serious vampire movie and blah blah blah, you're gonna roll your eyes because you disagree with them, or you don't think that that's a movie. But for them, that's their horror. Doing? Genre. You might love Twilight, mm -hmm. you know. He actually does. <laughs> I wasn't going to yeah. tell you how big the party was. Like, James is going to see this, and he's going to be pissed. <laughs> James was just due to break up with me anyway. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is that, yeah. like, well, now you're the elitist. All of us are now the elitist because we like the horror, the deep dive horror. Yeah. While this guy is just the superficial horror, is just getting into it, and has no care about what deep diving in like we do. Yeah, it's all about like clicks. Right, so now we're, we're yeah. yeah, so it doesn't matter what the fad is. Now that we've made skateboarding and comic books and horror popular, and we are the elitist of it, and now there's people that may be wanting to get into it, but it's superficial to them, and we're shunning them. 
I mean, you're yeah. only, you're only an elitist when you act like one. True. Yeah. And we, I mean, but I'm yeah, saying we may not think that. Yeah, way. that's that's we not re- realize it because you know we also we also live in a different age where bullying isn't tolerated. Like it was it was not only tolerated but encouraged when we were kids. Yeah. Like we were bullied by our parents. Right. So let's be real. Um, and teachers. You know, but, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't bullied by my parents, but you know what I'm saying. Like they would say things that were off color that would be considered bullying to a lot of people or mean, and it's just like the way we joke. Right. And you joke with certain people, you joke in a meaning way. Now, to a lot of people, that's offensive and it's hurtful. And, and, and it is to an extent if you took it that way. And it's just society looks, society's changed to the point where they look at things differently. So I, I don't know if that elitist thing is, I think it's, people are going to, if people are going to be bullied, they're just pieces of crap anyway. Right. So they'll find something. You can agree on 100% of any, everything and they're going to still bully you just because that's in their nature. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it, it's hard when you're, your your thing that you were passionate about as a kid and you were bullied for is now popular. And now but we have to, kind of want it to be because you don't want to be bullied for it anymore. <laughs> right. It's also that satisfaction of I was right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. The only reason things are the way they are these days is because nerds got tired of getting picked on. Yeah. And, because nerds world the world, and and men got tired of asking for directions. But all the all the right. smart all the smart kids own industry. All the tough jocks, you know, bad groceries. I don't. Right. I mean, I was never bullied as a kid, but still, like, yeah. Well, we, we all aspire to be Star Trek smart. <laughs> no. You know, when you're like <laughs> Wesley Crusher, or fourteen, you're on the starship programming all that crap. I hate Star Trek. Yeah. Well, you, you know what I mean yes. as an example. Yeah. Like these kids are, are, oh, are course, junior yeah. high doing complicated mathematic equations of, of galaxies. Which is crazy because we live in and an information age that is. Well, we are currently hard. getting to that point. Right. You know, where I, you know, my nephews are being taught in second grade their third language. You know? It's crazy how advanced these kids are and yet how backwards they are. Right. It's how reliant. It's it's very odd the things that they can't teach in school or don't teach in school. When I was in school, we had something called, uh, when I was in high school, we had practical mathematics. So when you went, you learned how to read a gas gauge, you learned how to do your taxes, learn how to balance a checkbook. These are all things that you can learn. No, to say do. You can you learn how to read a watch. Or yeah, a clock yeah, you learn how to read an analog clock. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, these things are, are practical. <laughs> <laughs> these, these things are practical. But then you also learn, you know, now you have kids in, in younger grades that are learning trigonometry, which is amazing. I didn't learn that until high school, but I've also never used it. Yeah. That you know of. <laughs> I may have unwillingly <laughs> in my sleep. Parts of it. You know, that's something interesting about going to school is like when I was, I was in that generation that switched from like paper to computers, mm-hmm. but they switched as I was leaving. So we were. My grade was like the test subjects, I guess, for the computer age. Um, and it was really weird because you like we would be on computers some days and the teachers would be like, okay, we're not doing it today because they're going to change the system. And then we'd take a day or two off and then third day back to computers. And it was so weird because I really didn't feel like we were learning anything. I feel like we were truly just being test subjects to it. <laughs> well, a lot of Ram it. Rats. A lot yeah. of it. A lot of it is because that younger generation was, was having um, problems with the computer systems because our generation learned how to hack. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were uh, hacking into our computers and fixing our. Uh, we had we hacked school computers. You guys yeah. had computer systems on your own. Oh, we did. <laughs> Apple two E's, baby. <laughs> yeah, we, we saw we saw uh, uh, what was it. What was the movie? Hackers? No, before that. With the Whopper. What? Like Burger King? Like Whopper? No, no. I'm trying to remember. With the Whopper and Dabney Coleman. Oh, uh. Yeah. Uh, that one. Cloak and Dagger? No, the other one. That's oh, the first time I ever heard it. It was a good Rise. game. The, uh, uh, where he plays oh. the game against oh, Rat, uh, the, the War games? Thank you. War games. We had, we had war games. See how my point is gone now? Because it took us 51 years to get to the point. <laughs> I'm not 51 yet. 
I got 11 days. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, I got two years. <laughs> it's like 11 days. <laughs> this is not like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I was born at 6 a.m. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that. That is rails. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least we didn't get into politics. Right. Not, not yet. <laughs> I will not talk politics. Yeah, so, what do you think about uh, Zul and Gozer? Do you think they got a chance this year? Veteran and Palpatine. I say Hicks. Hicks and Ripley. It's the only way to be sure. He's lost. Yeah. I, know. I know. I feel like they're. Even with the slang we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're speaking characters. Uber geek. <laughs> Zul and Gozer, that's Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. Oh. Vader and Palpatine? How do you not know Vader and Palpatine? <laughs> the way y'all like, no, did it in one thing, and I was yeah. like, is there something I don't know? Oh, like, what's the correlation something? between Vader and Palpatine and these other names? <laughs> Master and Servant? Yeah. Oh. No, that's what we're naming master and so. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. It's all <laughs> awesome. it's And Ripley and Hicks, really? That's aliens. Listen, dude, I'm really bad with names. Aliens, okay? Nuke the site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. okay. okay. See what I mean? Now who's we're getting clickish about being nerds. Now who's being the elitist? <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm the latest black, all right? That's it. That's all there is to say. I like serious black. That's like Eminem, MXM. What? The wrestlers? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you guys don't want to eat? Remember how I said the Croft Superstars was like a big acid trip? <laughs> so was this podcast. I feel like we're in the, the backseat of AJ's van. No, the, yeah, but the van of the, the There's Muppets. There's no seats back there. <laughs> the Muppets and their oh, yeah. the the band, the band is. Yeah, the Muppet band van. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like. Can I be animal? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Tooth? And that explains why right? Mr. Tooth, right? right. Yeah. Dr. Teeth. Dr. Teeth. Dr. Teeth. Backstory in like the newer show that they have just done. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I yeah. liked it. There was a show just about the Muppets Yeah. Yeah. It was on Disney. Really? Yeah. It was pretty good. I liked I was, it. I was I wasn't That was my favorite. Like, it, was like, uh, yeah. it was like Dr. May or Mr. Mayhem and Dr. Teeth or something like that. But yeah. Yeah. I will have to look that up. I just watched all of the Muppet movies recently. Well, I was yes. bored. I liked the the TV show that came on before <clears throat> the last one, where they had like Dave Grohl showing up. They were yeah. like a late night talk show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that one was really cool. That one was fun because it was a little more like adult. Yeah. Yeah, it was like Kermit left TV, and then there was like a side chick. Well, yeah. there was a. There's like something about them like showing up all like hungover and stuff. And, like, yeah. and the after party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. It was, yeah. It was like, uh, well, there was this show called Studio on the, uh, on the Studio 60 or something like that. And it was about late night talk shows and it was behind the scenes stuff. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. And so it was familiar when the Muppets were doing it. It reminded me of that show. So it was really good. Yeah. It had Matthew Perry in it. It was really good. Matthew Perry, we were friends. Not really. I was like, really? On the show. <laughs> we were all friends on the show. Never seen an episode. Thing. Never seen an episode of Friends. I've never seen an episode. What's that other one? Um, Seinfeld. Never seen Seinfeld. Never watched Seinfeld. No, I'm. Well, I've never seen it. It's Seinfeld so, until like it's so dumb and it's funny. Like it's, I, you know, I, no. It is so stupid. It's like I, I can't watch uh, It's Always Sunny. I never watched that. Because if my friends were anything like that, they'd be dead. I'd be in prison. <laughs> I watched a little bit of it. So I've only seen one episode of It's Sunny. Oh, is that what that's from? Yeah. That's the one where they had, like, the beginning was a, a whole different cast when Andrew Dice Clay was in it. Like, that's the only part of the show I've ever seen. 
I don't, I, just, I don't find any, like, I've seen clips of this stuff. I don't find any of it entertaining. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, no. I mean, it's probably the funniest shows in the world. Like, Maybe. I don't know. I like Curb Your Enthusiasm. And didn't that guy write Seinfeld? Was anyone? Yeah, Larry David. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm was funny, but, like, he's a sarcastic prick on it. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't imagine Seinfeld. I can't stand Jerry Seinfeld, though. I just I don't think he's funny. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, I feel like the other characters are the funnier ones. I feel like the, the show is honestly sometimes more about the other well, Julia's Julia Louise tried this. I like her in her other roles. You know? Yeah. I don't know actually. She was Veep. She was the uh, main character in Veep. She's amazing in that role, in that show. Her as a, a female vice president. And like everybody around her, she even brought back Anna Chomsky, Shlonsky from um, Thomas got stung by the bees. Um, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, you ever just look at people and you can literally see their loading sign? Well, I feel like that's what this podcast has been. Is us totally. Being like, what are you guys talking about? And then AJ and Richard are just like, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and you can like <laughs> see it. Like, you, 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 like it's my girl. Exactly that, yeah. My girl. Yeah. My girl. Uh, Aaron Chomsky was in My Girl. Did you ever see those movies? I saw the first one. So, first you know, when, yeah, there was the a second thing. one? Yeah, there was yeah. a second one. Yeah, she gets, the kid a, was, she gets a little older. older. The kid was dead. <laughs> she gets a little older. She falls in love with, like, some, some bougie uh, junior college poet professor thingy. I didn't watch it, but I knew, like, she was in it. Yeah. So, I, don't oh, I, I don't understand where you go from the first one. It just doesn't make any sense. He's watching. Uh-huh. And then we can watch a second. Hmm. Thomas isn't doing this. I have, I have no interest in seeing that. Anyway, so Anna Shlonsky is in V uh-huh. uh, as an adult. And Thomas isn't dying this. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Cool. Pretty like political humor. Sometimes. Depends on the good taste, but. It's not in good taste. It is no political humor is ever in good taste. Yeah, that's true. And it's only a half hour long sex. That's it. Beep on HBO. It is just doing ads at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's just making ads. Hey, you know I gotta get paid. <laughs> All those weed ain't gonna pay for itself. <laughs> Um, so we're here to talk about their company. I know. Well, we did talk about their company, didn't we? <laughs> Everyone knows what their company is. Didn't we? <laughs> I mean, sure, we haven't seen any of their work because they didn't bring any. But, you know. You were supposed to load it earlier. Eventually, it all load. Yeah. So, if I, have I remembered yet? Probably not. Or you can just go to Jimmy's and see some product. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 They had actual product yesterday, not just pictures. <laughs> not just pictures, actual product. Mm-hmm. Like we held a yeah. product in front of the camera. We had our logo behind us. Yeah. It looks cute. You guys just get the every shop, shop table. <laughs> we get the fucking friends and family yeah, discount, don't we? That's what we get. Because you're family. That's the nice <laughs> good feeling. So you got the nice. Air conditioned office. <laughs> you guys get this. I don't know, dude. Table. No, I had to bring my own weed. <laughs> but not this one. Were they supposed to bring weed? I can start doing a lot more it. interviews if people bring weed. Right? <laughs> I signed no contracts. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you just said we was family. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's the contract right there. Best thing you can do is dirty shop table. <laughs> Have you guys seen uh, I Saw the TV Globe? I, I watched it last night. I don't like it. <laughs> so why'd you bring it up? Because <laughs> I watched it last night. After Matlock. It's another thing this podcast has been is AJ saying, have you seen uh, Bobby like, Moynihan's no. <laughs> <laughs> movies that as horror movie people should have seen? Probably. Oh, we are so behind on horror movies. It's not even close. Like, it's not even close. Modern day horror movies, yeah. I yeah, mean, no. Like, how would movies fun? Oh, yeah. What's the latest? I don't even know, dude. 
Uh, I really, I don't even know. Sweet. Name, name something. I do, you, do you have a go-to horror movie? Um, I like a lot of those old, like, I mean, they're not old, old but like late 80s movies that are extremely grotesque and like involve mutated looking monsters. Those are like my jam. Those are the mm-hmm. examples. Uh, my one of my favorites is uh, Society. I love that movie. It's disgusting. It's got stupid comedy, which my humor is broken half the time anyway. Um, so, like when the dad says, "You're right, son. I, I am a butthead. I'm just that's my humor." <laughs> I love that. It's so dumb. Um, but see, society. I really like Reanimated. It was fun. Mm. Or, or I'm sorry, Reanimated. re-animated. Or, yeah, I was like, which one? Animated or, or no? <laughs> we, we need the mask. Uh, we named one of our masks Reanimated as an ode to Reanimator. Um, that one's really fun. We we used to have Shudder, and that's where I used to watch a lot of these. Because for a, for a while, actually, Shudder had like an '80s thing going on. Yeah. And I just binged them all. I just watched every single one on there. '80s B horror movies are the greatest thing in the world. Yep. The special effects are, you know, just the most amazing thing ever. Even if they're incredibly cheesy, I love it. The amounts of blood is amazing. I anything, love those. Any, anything sorry. that's got old 80s TV actors in it, amazing. Yeah. If you can see the guy that played Sulu in it, definitely yeah. worth watching. <laughs> I love those 80s <laughs> movies that always, like, they're entertaining throughout the whole thing, but the end of the movie is always just some insanely ridiculous and chaotic help. Yeah. Those are, like, the best payoffs. Or sitting through a long movie, you know? Have you ever seen a movie called Stuff? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the beginning, when the guy just scoops that out of the ground and eats it, like, why? Why? Why, <laughs> why is anybody eating this goop? Like, why? Yeah. Like, it's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> or, oh, uh, Basket Case. Like, Basket Case, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a freaking monster that just screams. Yep. So you just, and it's so... Dead Alive. Dead Alive is awesome. Your mother is my dog. <laughs> Not all of them. Watch, that, watch the original cut where um, it's called um, Brain Dead. Mm-hmm. When the when the uh, there's a priest karate fighting zombies, and he, <laughs> he's like, "I kick ass for the Lord." Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. I, say, I say that on Call of Duty all the time. See, that's the that's the comedy I love. Man. It's it's the best. Like I to this day, I even even B movies that come out now, I'll find the weirdest ones. I tell them all the time. Like what are you watching? Like what are you doing right now? Watching like cocaine werewolves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll send them trailers to random ones. I'll find. I love them. Yeah. I love like watching. ninja zombies. I found this, <laughs> I found this movie and it's so bad. It's amazing. It's called Bad CGI Alligator, and it's yes. literally it's, it's just a CGI alligator. Yeah, this flying. CGI alligator killing people and it's it, it's glitching. Like you're watching it glitch. Like it's so oh it's, it. it's awesome. Funny. It's awesome. Like the cheesier the better. Yeah. Like it's just. You know, bad effects and everything. Like, I love it. Yeah. When it's intentional, yeah. I like it. When when it's when they're trying to make it like when they're trying to, to make a serious movie and it just looks bad, it's different. But like, I mean, I fell in love with cheesy horror movies the first time when I saw um, was it Jason Takes Manhattan yeah. when he punches that dude's head off and you could tell it's an obvious a paper mache head. You yeah. couldn't even use a mannequin head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A paper mache, like it just looked horrible. I'm like, yeah. that's. Awesome. And he punches it so easy. Yeah, it it's just so right awesome. Off. Yeah, yeah. The uh, it's like when you can tell it's actual a, a dummy. Yeah, yeah. And oh, the body's falling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And their arms, like, the way they're yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's what's called um, what's the guy's name that did Lord of the Rings again? Um, Jackson. Peter yeah, Jackson. Peter Jackson. Some of his horror movies. Yeah. You ever see Bad Taste? I don't think so. Oh, I like man. Peter Jackson. I think that's. The What's the puppet one? It's the one. Oh, um, the meet the f- meet the Feagles. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's that Peter Jackson. Yeah. That's Peter Jackson really? too. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. that's a. Have you seen that one? No, but you've it is. That. Yeah, it is. It's it's like muppet porn. Really bad muppets. Like very very rated R muppets. Yeah, <laughs> it's everything that that you thought that what was that movie with uh when she's a cop the 
Yeah, I don't remember what the name of it, but yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to be like, because she gets, she's in she's Michelle a McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like she's a cop and like there's a, like puppets are real. Yeah. And she's like banging one of them. Yeah, and like it, it's everything that you thought that movie would be, but it, it's not. It's, yeah. It's, but yeah, that movie is so. And what we saw was the NC7. There's an X rated version of that movie. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I have it. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that might have been the one we watched that because I watched it. Riss borrowed some movies from you guys one time. If she borrowed it from Sean, then that, yeah, you have yeah, probably, yeah, probably, yeah, probably. I know she, she. That's where we saw it. Was we yeah, it's it's somebody. bad taste is like definitely check that out. It's it's awesome. It's it's not so much of a horror movie as it is an alien movie, but it is it is so grotesque and over top. That's cool. and there's a scene where a body goes over the and uh, body goes off of a cliff and basically like explodes when it hits the ground. And people still swear it was a real body because it, like, it fell like a body. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was. It was that's pretty. A, that's a part of effect is to get the the arms of a dummy to not yeah. walk around and do that thing, and then yeah. you know it's just I don't know, man. Some people back then were just doing it right. <laughs> yeah, there's. No, that's what's his name, Sex Machine. He was doing a lot of that stuff in the front. Yeah, I. I can never remember his oh, name. Savini. Thank you. Oh. Savini. Because he played Sex Machine he's, in... He's sex Machine in... Uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. Oh. He's, like, he's, he's got like the... the, the That's penis so rifle good. comes up and he's got the two soldiers. I never I realized that. Watch it like, I've literally... I've only seen that. I have it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Just yeah. for that scene. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I reload his gun all the time. Tom Savini is awesome. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the funniest thing is how he became an actor. What was it? Because he he always just was making the special effects, but Romero didn't have enough actors, so, just, so he would just get yeah. bit parts in movies. Oh, that's cool. That's <laughs> and all of, yeah. like when they started doing the like the Return of the Living Dead's and all those, like he did the special effects and had parts in them. <laughs> that's cool. Sleepaway camps. And all yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like Star Wars. Oh yeah. Play. Well, Harrison Ford was a carpenter. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, Mm -hmm. I love Star Wars. Man. I love. I can tell you like a lot of Star Wars. Well, there, he was a carpenter on American Graffiti, right? And then, that's where, yeah, yeah. Huh. that's cool. Yeah, this, Tom Savini is actually my. I love that guy. That dude's so awesome. I, that's one person I really want to meet. That's cool. Yeah. Really so it was cool on on the Lock and Key TV show. Mm -hmm. They had the the Savini Club. Uh, you guys never saw it. Uh -huh. It was an awesome theory. I think we talked. But um, it's based off a comic book by Joe Hill, who's Stephen King's son. And um, all these keys are made that allow you access to different things in the world and stuff. And, that sounds really familiar. And one of them was a mind key, and click it open, and your head would pop open, and you pull out from different parts of your personality, <clears> whatever, <throat> close it, and stuff like that. So, anyway, um, uh, there's a group of people called the Savini Club, and they do special effects and make their own homemade horror movies. And stuff like that. And that's cool. Yeah. But uh, it's a TV show on Netflix. The 80s movies and the 90s movies are, I don't know, man. They're just something else. Like, uh, was that one I showed you? The werewolf one with the girl. Ginger Snap? Yeah. Ginger Snap's a great awesome. one. Like the second that. one was crap. Was it? Yeah, I didn't care for the second one. We yeah. tried to watch it and I was really, it was hard to I was watch. really confused real quick. But yeah. the first one was just simple and so good. I loved it. The thing is, is the the way they change, so they get away from. Oddly enough, in the eighties and and early nineties, the way that movies were sexually explicit on top of it, because there was always some kind of sorority house massacre and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, I mean, when you're you know what twelve, thirteen watching it, it's awesome. But also, it's like. They get when they got away from that. They got away from doing cheesy horror movies in general. Yeah, like you can still do that without all the sex leaks. I don't know why they went away from that. Anyway, you get on TV nowadays. Anyway, yeah. But like when when they tried to basically clean it up, mm -hmm. then then we that's when we got into the gore fest, yeah. which aren't even entertaining. I like I like saws. I like the saw movies, but like. It goes too far, you know, or like what was the other one? Hostel. Oh yeah. Like 
they're just torture movies. Like there, yeah. there's nothing scary about it. Yeah. If these little dudes come at me, I'm gonna beat their ass. Like what? Mm -hmm. There's nothing intimidating about that. Yeah. Like I don't. So I, I think the genre needs to be adjusted at some point because oftentimes most of these movies are thrillers or they're like heist movies or yeah. they're just something. The story, or it's just a creepy environment. There's not really horror movies, but yeah. but There's you no can do factor to you can do the heist with the horror aspect. That's was was it? Right, Annabelle, right. Was it yeah, that? Annabelle. Yeah, yeah, that one was great. Yeah, they did a great job. Like that but it wasn't was scary though. It was no, just, that was more. I mean, are horror movies really scary? That's though? what I'm saying. Man. Like I miss the scary. Well, what's the, the what's movie. the last horror movie that scared you? Conjuring. <laughs> Conjuring too. Really? Yeah, the old man in the chair, dude. That shit creeped me the fuck out. Alien. Yeah. Yeah. I was five. Yeah. And then before that, it was uh, um, Exorcist 3. Yeah. And that white sheep goes after George Scott? <laughs> you know what? No. Um, the sister in Pet Cemetery creeped me out. I, think oh, I, was, yeah. I don't think I was really scared as much as I was just creeped just out. Just creeped out, yeah, this, yeah. I was intrigued, like... Scoliosis. Yeah, yeah. That, that creeped me, really creeped me out. But, yeah, no, I just... I don't think horror movies... Well, a lot of them are mostly, like, jump scares. Right. You know, they're... they're that's, what, that's what they bank on nowadays. And, and that's... It's a cheap... It, it's a cheap pop. It's a cheap way to do it. But the, 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 it's like gore. It's just it's it's easy for a gross out. Yeah. Like grossing someone out isn't necessarily no. scary. The, the last song is scary, scary, like legit. Was the original Ring when I first saw it. Ring. That was pretty creepy. Yeah. Both me, it was me, Joey, Sean, and and, and Peter, and we were all four of us. Like, turn that, on the that light, is, please. That, <laughs> that is pretty creepy. Like let's all sit together. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like, like I said, though, and that's the thing is that because I, I look at horror movies for, I love that cheesy genre. That's why I love zombie movies. They're so, they're so impractical and stupid. Like, <laughs> zombies couldn't possibly be real. One of the first things that your body, like, decomposes in the body is a cartridge, so they wouldn't be able to walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be. I can, well, unlike us, <laughs> they'd walk with no pain. <laughs> <laughs> But like I, I love that whole zombie genre, and all is as cheesy as all the Night of the Living Dead, Return of the Living Dead, like all those movies is cheesy, and they're the exact same storyline. Yeah. You know, I also love Hallmark Christmas movies, so those are the exact same storylines. Yeah. <laughs> I love just cheesy movies. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to yeah. me. It's just fun. It's mindless entertainment. It's something. Yeah. You know, and I, I miss that in I miss that in films in general because you don't get that. Yes. Everything's got tries to be so serious and so real nowadays, and it's got to be, it's got to have a purpose or it's got to have a message. Or, why can't it just be entertainment? I think that's why I love those '80s movies with those big payoffs so yeah. much because it's just like, in what world would there be a society of these crazy mutants that are like getting together and having orgies and stuff all the time? Like, you know, and then they're also like eating each other. Yeah, you know, like. It's just so ridiculous that it's entertaining. I was there last night while you were with Jimmy. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's it's funny to see like when, <laughs> when they do try to go with those storylines are more comedy than they are yeah. cheesy horror. Uh -huh. And like there has to there has to be a certain balance for for it to really catch my of course, yeah. my interest. But I mean they do they do try. Um you know, there's some comedians that, that try to do it, but like, I don't know, just, I think the horror, if for as, as popular as horror is, I don't think they really try with horror movies yeah. anymore. Like, it's just, they're, they're creepy. They're, th like you said, a lot of them are thrillers. Mm -hmm. And a thriller, if it's as suspenseful and cool as, as thrillers are, they're not horror. Right. Yeah. Or highly yeah. dramatic, like at the end, like The Others. The Others wasn't really a horror movie, because you find out it's just high drama at the end. Yeah. You well, know? even even Sixth Sense is considered a horror movie, and it's not right. You know, I mean, Signs is more of a horror movie than Sixth Sense was, and that's just an alien invasion movie, right? Stupid alien invasion movie, but an alien invasion movie, right? <laughs> I mean, it's still scared of the crap. I'm just saying, it's still it's, creepy. It's, it's still, I'm not it arguing. Was, it was done right, uh, but there's it's 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 something that I just think there needs to be a people need to look at horror, maybe just movies in general. 
Like it doesn't always have to have a message. It doesn't always have to say something about society. Yeah. Sometimes the only thing that that is a movie for the sake of being a movie now, and even comedies aren't comedies for the sake of being comedies. Like it's it's always got to have something. Well, I always like a good rom com. I love rom coms. You know, it's for my weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that a rom com? <laughs> Isn't it? I don't know. I've never seen it. The, the I've part? I've only ever seen those parts, um, and that's really it. and then like a couple like there's I know there's one scene where Rob Schneider's like trying to flirt with the guy because the girl used to do it to get free ice yeah. cream or maybe yeah yeah Starbucks it was a malt or something, or something yeah. like that yeah and he tries to do it yeah like that was a, a Lawrence brother yeah so it's it's just, I mean I it's know. funny I like it like it's one of those uh, random movies I'll put on in the background. <laughs> There actually is a movie. It's called Totally Killer. Okay. That movie's done right. It's a, it's a horror Well, it's basically like Scream in a way. But this girl ends up going back in time to the 80s <laughs> to stop a serial killer. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> and it's and it's and it's very cheesy and intentionally cheesy and it's amazing. It's called Totally 80. I think it's called no, totally killer. Definitely check it. It's definitely worth watching. It's 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 a I love that movie. There's After another I one accidentally that, discovered and I've watched it like five times. <laughs> there's another one that other time traveling one that's awesome. It's not really a horror movie. Either. Um you know what I'm talking about? Where she go travels back to her murder. Like she keeps waking up all over. Oh, it's like uh, that. yeah. It's oh, um, uh no, it's um no. Happy Death Day. Happy Death Day. Yes. There's Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you. Oh, yeah. They're freaking. So basically, it's Groundhog Day. Yeah. But with murder. With murder. Yeah. She has to figure out. She has to stop her own murder by the end of the day. Yeah. I remember. But it's comedy. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's so comedy. The different way she dies and stuff. You remember the show? I was thinking of the show that we watched that they're like in high school. And she's dead, and she doesn't yes. realize she's dead at first, and now she's trying to figure out her murder. Oh, her murder, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought you were saying. No. Going on? I don't no, that one got canceled. It did? Yeah, I think yeah. that canceled. One and done. Really like that. I know. Stop feeling my tape. So, where are we going <laughs> to see you next? What's your next show? It's right there. Yeah, I'm right here, dude. Open your eyes. Uh, trans world. Can you smack your husband for me? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, but I'm gonna smack. <laughs> okay. You don't like him that much. <laughs> it take a lot of effort. I just to love it. it. Uh, will ask a question, and then I'll attempt to answer it, and then we just drive off a cliff. Welcome know. to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> trans world will be the next one. 2025. Anything new or anything that you guys are working on that you can talk about yeah, uh, before uh, then? Well, we, other than your show with Jimmy? Yeah, so yesterday we did a show with Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy uh, drives the car very well. AJ drives us off, off cliffs. <laughs> Do you not want to be on my show anymore? Is that what you're saying? I love being on your show. Do you say you like Jimmy's show better? Is that what you're telling me right now, motherfucker, on my I show? Love it. While I have a knife in my hand, I love it. Oh, you're a liar. <laughs> we were literally just talking about B movie chaos, and that's exactly what this podcast is. But I know. <laughs> uh, no, we're working on some fun stuff. We started actually working on a few things, like I want to say back in May. May, we did some live casts. Uh, earlier in oh, the year. Oh, yeah! It was like in May, right? That was like May. So, we honestly, <laughs> obviously, we're not like full. You in totally just got Jersey Girl right there. Yeah, that was May. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why did you make her sound like Rain Man then? I don't know, because <laughs> she's also tired. <laughs> hey? Um, <coughs> new projects, new life paths. Mm -hmm. That's fun. New and, pumpkins uh, are coming. Oh yeah, yeah. We just bought some new pumpkins for next year because we always <laughs> we always try to add at least like two two to four new pumpkins to our existing lineup every year mm -hmm. um, until we eventually just have 
like 20 molds, then we're going to probably call it done because that's a lot of molds. <laughs> now, you were uh, very quickly trying to pull some tarps over some product earlier. Yeah. What was that about? So, there are some <laughs> certain products that we like to keep a little more secretive just because, you know, they're, uh, they're great products, but uh, of course, if too many people find out about them, then nobody buys from us because they just do it themselves. And don't get me wrong, I'm all about encouraging people to try things and learn things. Um, but that's what we had to do to get to where we're at. Like we had talked about earlier on the show, um, learning from other professionals in the industry, you know, that were willing to share their secrets. So we have to kind of honor, honor and respect them that they were willing to share those secrets. So now it's up to us to not share them because of their secrets. So a lot of the stuff we use is uh, things like that, that we we've learned from other people. Yeah, well, tell us about some of the chemicals that you do work with that you can talk about. Uh, I mean, all of our masks are made out of latex. Um, we've used a few different latexes over the years. Uh, some are great, some are kind of meh, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, we've got a couple of latex brands that we really like. Uh, what else do we use? Uh, we use a lot of fiberglass for mold making, mm -hmm. which I'm cool talking about because, uh, as I mentioned before, we learned from Dan Winston School. Uh, how to do fiberglass molds, um, and uh, that was a huge help. Uh, switching for our for our prop molds using different silicones, and then doing just straight fiberglass on some, or making like a fiberglass uh, shell mold over a silicone uh, jacket. Um, but we'll use uh, a lot of different silicones for molds. Some platinums are great for uh, more sensitive materials that. Uh, don't like other materials. You know, sometimes sometimes two materials don't get along and one will cause another not to cure. And so platinum and silicones are great for that. Um, um, but then yeah, we use foam. Use foam. A lot of foam. <laughs> Tons Refined of foam. Of foam. Yeah. Use foam. Yeah. Use foam. <laughs> foam. <laughs> Soft foam, rich foam. Uh styrofoam. <laughs> <laughs> we use all kinds of foam. She said soft foam. <laughs> We have curly foam, we have straight foam, we have hard foam, we have squishy foam. This is the part where you guys are off the cliff. She started it! Just said something in AJ. I was trying to be honest though, I was just like, how do I talk, like what do I talk about? Foam. Yeah. Foam. Paints. I use different paints. Yeah. Have you answered the phone lately? No. Yeah. We don't answer our phone. Yeah. <laughs> What's the hardest type of thing to work with? That's uh phones can be really difficult. Um they're very temperamental. Yeah. So like everything has a factor of like temperature humidity. or humidity. Um even even down to like the cup that you mix it in. That yeah. Is, uh, foams can just be really, really simple. Um, there's been times where you've been on like serious crunch time and all of a sudden our foam is not curing because it's too cold in the shop or something. Uh, and it's, you know, we don't have a heated shop, so we just have to, uh, deal with it and, and trying to, trying to troubleshoot certain materials like foam is really hard to figure out what the problem is as to why something may not be curing. Many factors. You have to retrace your steps and like we label everything as we're working on stuff so that if something gets screwed up, we can trace back to, okay, well, it might not have been this because we labeled it and it's heated or whatever, or it's not a mixing issue because our, our, we're mixing it more than yeah. whatever. Um, yeah. Not fiberglass. Fiberglass is just mess. Fiberglass is, is like, a, a virus. <laughs> you will like work with it on making mold, and then a couple weeks later, you'll look at your arm and be like, "Oh my god, I'm covered in fiberglass." It's like glitter. Yeah, like those super fine powdery glitters. I was gonna ask. You end up like itching like crazy yeah. working with it. Yeah, it gets yeah. pretty itchy. Um, we like suit up for it. Yeah, or at least we used to. Nowadays, we just kind of wear gloves and. Eat. But I would continue yeah. to suit up because you know what happens if you keep working with it? Uh, Eventually your body starts rejecting it, you become allergic to it. Really? Yep. Is this from experience? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. With fiberglass? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I, the fiberglass gives me rashes now and splits my skin open. Really? Oh. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, it's just like, Wait, if, you, if you know a lot of nurses, once that's why they changed the way it to, that's why what are they uh, neoprene or whatever. They, yeah. the, the, that's why they stopped using latex gloves because eventually nurses from using latex gloves all the time become allergic to them. Wow. That's Especially with, with the powder inside, inside the gloves. Yeah, everything. Yeah, eventually, if you, if you take something or use something too long, your body will start to reject it because it's not... You're sucking it in, your your body's soaking it into the pores, the chemicals that it's made out of. That's why I switch wives every 20 years. Nice. That's around the time when they start rejecting me. <laughs> 20 years? Oh, that's impressive. Yeah. So you're the, you're the, you're the right. <clears throat> I'm the virus. He's yeah. the virus. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, fiberglass can be messy. Like I said, we used to suit up and wear like crazy hazmat suits. Not hazmat, but jumpsuits and you know gloves with the sleeves tucked in and everything. Uh, we got to the point now where we're just more comfortable working with it. That we're we're very cautious of what we touch once we touch the fiberglass. Um, I'm still gloves, oh, goggles, yeah. respirator. Yeah, it's still pretty suited up compared to all the other stuff that we work with. But uh, yeah. Okay, two more questions and then we'll be all done. Huh. One, what was the best thing you had to work on? Like the uh, the most, uh, I don't know. You tell me, what was your, your favorite project you had to work on? The most the thing you got to create? Like in, in our company's existence? Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. That's a good question. Yeah. We've gotten, we, we were lucky enough to have gotten to work, to work on a lot of really cool projects. Um, so it, it is incredibly hard to pick one specifically. You ever just do one look back at it? I was like, Yeah. Yes. That was recent for me. So uh, I did, it was just a one off prop. Just, I just thought it'd be cool. Uh, and so it was a, like a fall basket, maybe like a Thanksgiving cornucopia. Cornucopia? Yep. Um, think of like that, right? But I wanted like a pretty dead head in there. Like I didn't want her to just like, some of our stuff is just like border, like, like her eyeball, some girl with her, whatever. I wanted her to just look pretty dead and just be the center of it with like all the floral and cord and everything. And so I made I made that for midsummer of the past year. And it was my favorite thing. I got to one paint I had I usually don't do fleshy stuff with third category. Um and so I got to do that with a fun floral arrangement. But you did truly make her like pretty, like it was bloody, but it was and she like, was dead, like yeah. she died. <laughs> but you made you gave her like makeup, basically. Yeah, like, yeah, it was it was cool. I liked it. And then yeah, the the apples and corn and wheat stuff mixed in with mm-hmm. it. Yeah. That one was a fun one, and it Sometimes. wasn't for anything in particular either, right? It was just like this sounds fun yeah. and see how it goes, and it like it small, so I was really happy. And and I'm glad those are, are really too. fun. Just those small one-off things. You know. What about for you? I I um, I really like doing large like statement pieces. Um, so a lot of the bodies that we've gotten to do, I'm just I, I love it because there's nothing cooler than walking into a room with a haunt and seeing just a torn up body, you know, in a room. Um, it's not one that we've done before, but it's one we're gonna do. I'm already oh. super, super excited for it. Uh, we're gonna be starting it like any day now, so I can't necessarily say where it's for yet. But it's gonna be like this larger guy that's you know, like dressed like a hillbilly type of dude. Um, that's gonna be in a trailer dead, and he's supposed to look like he had like candy stuff down his throat. And he's gonna have like a, a lump in his throat of candy for the night like his throat bulging. He's gonna be puking candy up, and then his stomach is gonna be completely ripped open. Up to I'm really excited for that one. I Butterscotch? Um, <laughs> I mean I have got I've got Twix, I've got Reese's, I, I don't know. We're, we're collecting uh wrappers right now. Like candy wrappers. Yeah, we got candy corn that we're gonna stuff in them. We just take all the candy corn in the world yep. off the shelves and well, put them in this. this <laughs> it's fake candy corn, for 
I like candy corn. Please take all the candy corn in the world. And what was your nightmare project? What was the one you hated the most? Uh, you looked at and you're like, this is crap. I can't believe I did this. Why do I do this? I need to kill everybody and myself. <laughs> Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> Every project we work on. It's definitely probably for me, it's, it's no one probably ever got to see them because there's been some projects that will start and be like, you know what, forget this. Oh, and then we like it. Or it turns into something else like mm -hmm. really different. But we didn't like where it was going. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, there's been some masks. I would say there, there have been some masks uh, that I've worked on for months and I just for some reason can't. See it like when I'm sculpting it. Like when made. Yes, oh yeah. You don't even oh no, no. Well, I like that, but it got scrapped because I was like, eh, it could, it could definitely be better. But there's, there's definitely been some masks that when I'm in the sculpting. Phase, Is there a story there? You want to tell a story, don't you? Look at that face. Look at that face. There's such a story there. So I wanted to make this birthday, but I'm not a sculptor. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was a sculptor of our company. I'm a painter. So, I had this evil mermaid in my brain, and I didn't know how to describe it, I guess, properly. And so, even as much as I told Adam, like, this is this is what I envisioned, this is the thing, and then he tried, and it wasn't going the direction I saw, but he saw something different, which is usually fine, because usually he, like, gets to something else that I'm like, that's still really cool. Well, so you, you tried. Did. Yeah. You started sculpting. She's like, we're leaving that part out. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like don't whoa, stop. don't throw that blame <laughs> over here, buddy. No, 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 no. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, 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 you <laughs> you you eventually said screw it and just yeah. like, do something cool. Do it, yeah. And it never it it wasn't what was in here. It never happened. It ended up being like One day, a, maybe. a mermaid, like sea queen, and the the crown was made out of like those cool spirally seashells, and there was like a little like octopus for like the the base of the crown, and mm -hmm. then the, the legs wrapped around the seashells and stuff. It was cool. I, I, it was cool, but it was one of our like oldest ones, so it was cool back then. Nowadays, I I don't know. It could be much better. <laughs> That's the equivalent of asking an artist, but how many crumpled pieces of paper do you have? Like, yeah, because like, yeah. no, everybody's their own worst critic. Like you, yeah. you hate everything he's done. Like, well, that's what I mean. I don't mean creatively. I mean, what what was uh, the the most the worst project you had to work on? There's the a toughest. Yeah, yeah, let's say like a third party or something. You got you got yeah. as, scripted to do something. As far as just like physically uh, draining and hard, um, there's been some crazy deadlines where yeah. we, you know, looking back, we probably should have said no to some of them. But you know, when you hear a really cool project idea, you're just like, oh, we can't pass that, can't pass up. that up. So we take it on, and the deadlines are crazy and they're stressful, but um one okay i will say one recently that was really really cool but was a, a lot more work than i think we initially thought it would be was these i i know you're probably gonna make jokes was these giant sacks <laughs> go ahead no i know you're thinking it you're just you're just jumping out of your skin Forget. these giant sacks that were uh like alien egg sacks uh, and they were really fun and really cool at the end of it. Uh, but we had to make 30 total of them. Yeah. And that was a, a hefty order. Uh, and they were all like three to four foot tall each. Just the like bulbous part of it. The stem added probably another four feet. We also had like three weeks to do it. Yeah. It was a really quick turnaround. Um, and, and that's because we were like begging. Because they were like yeah. two weeks, and we're like, no, we're it like, can't. We can't, like, physically, we can't it cannot happen. 
but, we like got a third beat. And that was on top of, of course, all of our other typical orders that were going on at the time. So yeah, that one was crazy. It was very, super cool. Like they came out really cool. Oh yeah, I was incredibly happy with the look of them at the end of the project. But man, it was like we lost a lot of sleep. My back was hurting, <laughs> and my legs were hurting. We were covered in material, like my arm hair was, I was pulling patches off of me because it was covered in stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah, it was, it was a, a really cool one. But Adam keeps calling me out on stuff. You ever notice when Adam wants to talk about his skin or anything on his arm, he has to go to his tattooed arm. Like he has to be like, oh, my poor Wednesday Adams. Oh, look at my tattoos. That's what he does every single time. Yeah. <laughs> I really didn't even. Every time. Well, now you're just going to get tattoos on the other arm. So now it doesn't matter. You know, it's funny you actually say that because this is the arm that actually gets a lot of stuff on it when we're working. Yeah, I'm surprised your tattoos look as nice as they do. I'm right? going to be honest. Yeah. Like, you know, the chemicals have, like, healed anything on his tattoos off? Like, I don't know. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the process time for like a mask or a pumpkin? How long does it normally take? If it's not like a fully custom thing that we have to start like from the sculpt and keep going from there, if it's just like something we already have a mold for, we can pour it, pull it, paint it, and everything. Um, a pumpkin, a, a small pumpkin, is maybe a week mm -hmm. if we're if we're not busy, yeah. of course. If we're busy, then it's like two, three weeks, possibly even more. Mm -hmm. um, For one pumpkin, because we work in a we work in an order of when the order was placed. Right, but so, I mean, like if you had nothing going on, and there's nothing going on, yeah, like like right now, like a week. A week, yeah. And part of that has to do with a bug flying in your face. <laughs> 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 we all watch that. Right. <laughs> well, what came earlier? I was like, I don't know, y'all. Get into our nose. Get into our nose. I was just like doing this. Like, I'm sure you're gonna watch it and see a lot of like me like doing this because there's like a bug flying around. You just really were tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's it's telling the chemicals, man. <laughs> she's telling the bug how to land on her. She's like, you go this way. The <laughs> flight plan and the pattern right here. <laughs> Anyway, right down this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, part of the process of it taking a week isn't necessarily that, like, oh, it takes a week for like every little step. It's more so like this step needs to make sure it's dried completely before I can do the next step. Right. So I have to leave it like overnight. So it's not like twenty four seven or anything like that. You're working on it. You're only doing like a couple hours a day and then letting it set until the next day. Right. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, do you know your booth number for Transworld yet? We don't yet. Not yet. I'm hoping it stays the same. I don't remember what were we like fifteen something. I don't know. I'm hoping it stays the same because last year we had, or this year we had a really cool spot. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having, thanks for having us. What the day after. There it is. There it is. Thanks for, you know. Thank you, Jimmy, for having us on the podcast the other day. Thanks for taking the idea that I presented you with months ago and using it on somebody else's show. <laughs> it was not months ago. Listen and trying to up the story. It was months ago, the last time I was here. We were on your show first. Oh, look at you. <laughs> look at you. We walked across the street to your house. <laughs> to your garage. And sat in your air conditioned garage. Was it even, was it AC? Yes, it had AC. The, no. the garage was open? No, we didn't have the garage door open because I couldn't do the, the sound with the garage door open. I don't remember it being I have pictures. I don't, I don't know if the door was open. I don't remember. There was I don't air air. <laughs> <laughs> the, point, the point thing is that we were on your trip first. That's right, which means I supported you and your dream before anybody else did, including Jimmy. There you go. Mm -hmm. We'll just let him have this. We'll let him have it. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, we can touch it. <laughs>
You can have that bitch. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, Adam and Joseph at Fix dot com yep. for your website. Um, you have pictures of all of your products and everything up there right yeah. now. Uh, you are taking orders right now, currently, right? No. No, you're not taking orders right now. When will your orders be available? Well, we're trying to get our in stock page of our website back up in maybe a week or so in time for mm -hmm. October, uh, which is where you can buy ready to ship items. Um, so stock, you can have it in time for Halloween? Yep. Stock is limited, um, but we're trying to get that back up soon. Uh, after October, we're probably going to start prepping new stuff for Transworld. Hopefully, have the full website back up around the media. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the Jimmy we're talking about is Jimmy Purcell of In Better Comics. He's been on the show before. Dear friend of all of us, we're only giving him crap because it's funny and because I hate him. Um, so that's that's all. I just <laughs> there are a lot of people out there like, who the hell is Jimmy? Uh, for <laughs> podcast, since we've been talking about it for an hour. Yeah, he has a podcast, I, I guess. I don't know, whatever with him. You guys, on the other hand, uh, thanks again for being on the show. Uh, we appreciate it. Hope to have you back on here when you have some product to show me. Yeah. Oh, you look at me. Call, call us like, you know, the day after or something that is possible. Awesome. <laughs> I'll schedule it. How's that? Okay. Have I your, scheduled have, Jimmy's. Have your people. He scheduled yours. I scheduled Jimmy's. So just oh, like, I don't ask like, me. I think I told her that we were doing this like this morning. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, it is coming over. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in <laughs> to fuckadamandjess.com. <laughs> Whoa, that's something completely uh, different. Uh, All proceeds go to thinkbetter.com. <laughs> 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 anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks, uh, Adam and Jess from Adam and Jess Thank you, Rich, from Crooked Smile Collectibles. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next episode of the Panelcast. <laughs>